What is the next crucial skill after mastering basic coding syntax? Hi, I'm Stuart. I'm going to show you and guide you through the essential world of error handling and software development. So you've learned to write programs that work when everything goes right. But did you know that robust error handling can turn even the most fragile application into an unshakable fortress? Let's jump into the key principles of effective error management. We'll explore exception hierarchies and graceful degradation, and we'll look how to turn errors into valuable feedback loops. So let's transform your code in, from a house of cards into an impenetrable fortress. So let's take a look at this Python script. The Python script here defines a cloud storage simulator class. And what this does is it mimics basic cloud function or storage or functionality. The class uses a dictionary to store buckets with each bucket having a name and a region. The main method create bucket attempts to create a new bucket if the provided name and region meet a certain criteria. So it checks if the bucket name is valid. And here we're checking to make sure this has three to 63 characters and they all have been in lowercase and alphanumerical. And the other thing we're gonna check is that it's not already in use. So there can't already be a name in use or a bucket with this name. We're also gonna check if the region is valid. So either none or one of the prefeed regions. If these conditions are met, we will add a bucket to the storage and what will happen is it will print a success message. Otherwise, if it doesn't, what will happen is it will silently fail. The script in, has a usage example which demonstrates creating buckets with various inputs, including valid and invalid cases. So this simplified version, what it does is it really lacks error handling and it really doesn't provide any feedback when our bucket creation fails due to invalid inputs, existing buckets, et cetera, et cetera. So here we can have method uh, or methods which are helper functions that can implement the validation and logic for the bucket names and regions respectively. But we want to have error handling. So how does this work and why? So in our example code, the create bucket method, what it does is it simply checks the conditions and creates the bucket if all of our conditions are met. Again, if any of the conditions fail, the method will just do nothing and nothing will happen. You'll see nothing from the console. So the cloud storage error is defined as a subclass here built of the built-in exception class. And this allows it to be raised and caught like any other exception. Error handling here in the create bucket. So here, the create underscore bucket method, we're gonna use a try exception block to handle all of our potential errors during the bucket creation itself. So with inside the try block, we're gonna have various checks and these checks are gonna be performed. These checks are is valid uh, bucket name. And what this does is it checks if our bucket name meets our specific criteria. And we mentioned that this is three to 63 characters. So we've also got the next one, which is, is valid reason. And this checks for the provided region is valid. Now, if any of these checks fail, a cloud storage error is gonna be raised with a specific error message. So for example, if the bucket already exists, a cloud storage error is gonna be raised. If an unexpected error occurs, a general exception is caught and a generic error message is gonna be printed. The core logic of the is valid bucket name and is valid region methods, they will still remain unchanged. The main changes here were to the create bucket method and the addition of error handling actually around these steps. The provided usage here demonstrates creating buckets which have a valid and or in notices for invalid name and also our region. The code now handles potential errors gracefully by printing appropriate messages. Now that we've seen how to implement error handling in a cloud storage simulation, we're pretty much ready to take on our cloud development skills and take them to the next level. So this isn't just about creating simple apps anymore. It's all about building robust, scalable code. You might need to practice implementing some of these exceptions and error handling in your own projects. So give that a try. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more cloud coding content, subscribe to the AWS YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy coding.